Hello again. These are the flip-flops I bought at the fair in Arnhem last month. And they're perfect for the bedroom. I'm starting on a new project soon and um, so I have to clean my workshop and I'm putting away all of the items I bought at the auction last month in Arnhem. So there are Henny's Sultan vases back to where they should be and in the room below we've got some this candlestick and I don't know if that's going to be the final location for it but for now it will be going there and I've also got this one which was part of an auction lot and it's a little bit big so it's probably doll size instead of doll's house size but that doesn't matter it's old and it's probably Chinese so we'll just put it there for now until I find a better spot for it and I also have this one which is another um, large size vase also part of an auction lot um, and it has a little silver top on it which has gone completely black so I'll have to clean that one day and again it's a bit big but that's all right we'll just put it here for now and uh, I think that looks nice And the last piece I'll put in here is this wonderful, well, what do you call it, jug um, by Elisabeth Coseret. And I'll put that here for now. I think that is such a beautiful piece. I'm glad I saw that. And it will live in there for now. I don't know if it will stay there forever, <laughs> but for now, this is where it's going. And here are the other little flip-flops that I bought. And these, let me get that one, go in the other bedroom because look, and here's some of the wallpaper. Um, the colors are perfect for that and I've got a little box here with items that are to go in the bedroom when it's finished so I'll put that in there because of course I'm still working on that so that goes in there put away the wallpaper I've got a box of wallpaper as well put that in there And this one, did I show you that? I cannot remember. I picked it up at the fair. Uh, it's a plate I painted in a cocky Wildschut class in, I think it was 2019, yes. And um, because of COVID, we never saw each other and she still had to fire it in the kiln so um i never picked it up and then someone brought it to the fair for me so that i'm not sure if it's finished yet i may have to do a border around it i don't know yet but i'll keep that safe as well and of course i also have a little box for that with some other pieces I painted 
in the past. That can go in there. And this beautiful piece, I'm still not sure where I'll put it, but um, for now I think I'll put it in the dining room with the other blue and white porcelain. I don't have a lot of room for it. Maybe up here? But I think that's where I wanted to put the ivory bocals display. Um, I don't know. And I would like to have it up front a little bit so you can see it better. But, um, well, for now, keep it safe. Let's put it up here on that chair. Looks a bit strange. <laughs> Just to keep it safe until I know where to put it. And these metal embellishments um, I bought a few. I usually buy one or two or a couple when I'm uh, at the fair because they come in so handy. Um, and I like to have items in my stash so when I want to make something I can just pick something and um, I don't have to order anything because that that kind of uh, holds the flow of I don't know creativity. I just like to go around in my workshop and search for something I like usually. So and I've got a box of these as well. And this is like twenty years of collecting. And I've used one or two items in here. Well, one or two more than one or two. Lots of them. I use these. I like them. And as I don't have time to um, work on the location for the teapots, I also have a box for those. So they'll keep safe in there. Oh, actually, I'll put those in there as well. Those are, again, for the kitchen, um, but I'll have to find... I rearranged the... Um, dresser in there, because I've already got a lot of the white porcelain in there. So... Let's see... Oh, this one's for the bedroom. Put that in the bedroom box. So it goes in there for now. And that one as well. for the next project. Oh, and a few weeks ago when I was working on my silver book cover, I showed you this tool, which I'm really happy I bought. But I also bought this one. And this is called um, Thingamajig <laughs> Deluxe. And uh, you have to shop around a little bit. And if you're in the US, it's going to be a lot cheaper than for us here, but still it wasn't, it was not a lot of money. And um, it works the same way as this tool. It just has a lot of these pins. You can insert into this into all of these holes and bigger round ones and it's to create round shapes with wire and basically they're meant for making jewelry 
but they're also really handy for making miniatures. So I'm sure I'll be using that in the future. And I'm actually really glad I got that. It's one of those things that if you don't have it, you're always struggling to get certain shapes. And here's little round bits. I think that's for protecting the metal or the stuff you're working on. Oh, I wonder if these fit in there. No, maybe the other way around. No, well, they do fit, but they don't fit. They wobble around, so. Um, yeah. Another great addition to my tool chest. And I bought this at the Zilverwinkel in the Netherlands. And I don't know if they still have them. Uh, but here you can see how it works. You just, if you have metal wire, you just wrap that around there and you can make lots of shapes. So, yeah, happy with that. This past summer I was in Denmark taking classes during the wonderful week of Miniature in Tune and maybe you remember my vlog posts about it. Miniature in Tune was started 13 years ago by three lovely Danish ladies and I had the opportunity to take the fantastic classes there a few times. Now, in the beginning of this year, I got an urgent call and I was asked to help organize the week of 2022, which I did. And yes, it was a lot of work, but it was also fun. And the week of classes and staying on the location in June was wonderful and absolutely worth it. And since then, I've also been working on the continuation of Miniature in Tune by setting up a new organization, which is almost finalized. But even as the new organization still had to be set up, I also worked on organizing the classes for next year, in July 2023. And these past few weeks I've not had much time to work on miniatures for myself as I had to get the website and everything behind the scenes ready for the students' registration of next year's classes. And it's finished! The classes for next year are on our website now and everyone can register for them. So this is how it works. The week starts with a three-day class of your choice from Monday, Monday till Wednesday. And then on Thursday and Friday, you take a two-day class of your choice. And in the evenings, we have seminars, a sale, uh, an exhibition, and of course, just time to relax. We all stay at the venue and we all have single rooms with bathrooms and we have wonderful breakfasts and lunches and dinners, coffee, tea, etc. all at the same venue. Now, why don't you go over to the website and have a look at the wonderful classes yourself? Because I'll tell you, I had a hard time choosing. I really, really like them all. Well, that's it for today. I hope you'll be able to join us in um, Miniature in June in Denmark next year. And if not, then um, I'll see you here on my vlog, perhaps. I'll just continue cleaning. Put that there. Until next time!